We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us in the of our life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this day. And thank you for you and love one toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This last hymn I'd like to point out in the third stanza, in the, well, it's the third line, uh, but it's the second part of our page. It begins with, I have a future in heaven for sure. There are those mansions supplied. And it is because of the wondrous day when at the cross, I believe. It, it's just one of those points of, of the power of the ascension. Let us sing. Why don't you stand up?
<coughs> All right, you may be seated for a moment of uh, announcements. A moment of announcements. I don't have one. No, None? Oh, oh, here. Here. oh, Somebody's always got a break. This week is the. <laughs> Thank you for leading us this morning, Pastor. Yes. Schedule for a couple more this summer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two in July. Just up by the top, there's a button. I can't remember. Where's the button? Oh, up by the top. Um, that's handheld. Oh, that's the one. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is for the Optimist um, Strawberry Pancake Breakfast. I'm going to put up a flyer. Uh, today I do have 25 tickets, with, uh, raffle tickets with me, that if any of you want to buy them, they're a dollar a piece, and they're for huge baskets of all kinds of stuff that we put together and sell at the breakfast. Um, it'll be the first morning, Saturday morning, um, in, in June, and <coughs> we hope to see you there. Thank you. It will be held at the Lynn Lane's Bowling Alley Yard. We'll have it all set up in a canopy over it and so on. What town? What town? Lebanon. as well. Yeah. As soon as you end that, let's get rid of the card. Yep. I'm going to end it. Thank, Thank you. you.
Okay. And low, low, low sodium and less amount of stroke. All right. Um, the other one that's on the uh, list here is Eunice. Is there any new information for Eunice? Last time the issue was about the same. Chuck? About the same. He nods his head. About the same as we will continue to keep in our prayers. Uh, Christine, Paul, uh, uh, the newsletter said today is the last day for uh, contributions to help them with their finances. So uh, that if you uh, have some uh, contribution for them, put them in the, on the envelopes that they're in, in your two pockets. Uh, and uh, we'll pass that on uh, to the family as they deal with some financial issues. Uh, the last I knew uh, from uh, Erica was that uh, their nephew, uh, Skyler, uh, was off the suicide watch and was back home uh, doing much better. Uh, one of the things that I have on the list here uh, is uh, the accident that was up on I-5 that uh, killed, the, I think, the, uh, seven uh, people and injured another uh, four or five uh, truck driver. Um, I want to pray uh, for a few other things. That, uh, uh, our, uh, our volunteerism sometimes uh, is up strong and then sometimes it wanes and then it goes up again. But we're back at a place in the congregation where we need uh, more and more volunteers to help them, like the worship team. Uh, there isn't any worship team here today except for Kathy. Uh, well, and me. Oh, Gloria. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I understand that. I, it's summertime or fall. And, uh, so we expect to not always to have them. But it's not just the worship team. Um, there is the those who serve as ushers. For those who serve as uh, readers, uh, those uh, who uh, are, are singers at uh, different times in our services, uh, those kinds of things. Uh, there's always the need for people on the building uh, and maintenance group. I'm sure as we're going to BBS, the BBS Education Board would love to have some more helpers. So I, I just remind you that the congregation, as a congregation, we works best if we have volunteers to do that. Uh, it always gets to be an issue when there's it falls on the shoulders of one or two people. Uh, they burn out and then they quit and then we don't do it and have it all. It's much better to have a committee and a team, as we call them here, teams that do this. And then uh, a reminder, I, I haven't been able to do it, but your uh, prayer warrior meetings that uh, have, I assume that, that uh, they'll um, be continuing that through the summer. We'll see what Pastor Fred next week. And then finally on the prayer list I have the uh, Northwest District Gathering that started the Friday night or yesterday and continues till about noon or two o'clock this afternoon. And then I think we're done and return home. So uh, with those uh, announcements uh, on the list, is there any uh, other people for whom we should be praying or uh, encouraging? Yes. Uh, Carol Back, she's 
got a nose infection. <laughs> and she would be here except that the antibiotics made her sleepy, and she said she, she knows that she would fall asleep. Well, if she was here, I'd tease her about getting her nose in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah. Ruth. Ruth. Got one up here. It's really a lot. One of my neighbors was just diagnosed with cystic pulmonary disease, which there's no cure for. And she needs she needs prayer. Uh, that's a lung disease, right? So yes. Yes, like and it, or yeah, when it's like the lungs and it progresses so that pretty soon you can't breathe even with oxygen and you end up suffocating. And she's only in, you know, she's not not old. Anybody under 70 is not old. Okay. <laughs> 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 I'd like to do like to do a praise. Uh, thank you, Pastor John, for bringing us Bible studies on uh, Saturday morning. Uh, it is such an inspiration and a blessing to us guys to receive the word and to I'm not sure I want to use the word interpretation but um, your thoughts and insights into the apostles and uh, Jesus that uh, you've been sharing with us so thank you very much well uh, part, of, part of that fun is that the, uh, I've written some I've got a book in to be published, hopefully, uh, that has some of the characters. And if it, if it goes, I'm going to do the 12 apostles and what they did while they were with Jesus and then what they did after um, they went into the world to share the gospel of Matthew 28 to the rest of the world. So I've been studying the, the apostles, and so that's been fun. And I told Bill, that, or the men's group, this coming this fall, we're, we're not going to meet this summer. A couple of things, and I, I miss a couple of not the Saturdays, and so we just said, I just not going to take, we just take a break. But this fall, I'd like to do, like to do one on the prop, the twelve prophets of the Old Testament. Bill, yes, I know. So we're we're going to take the summer off from the Bible study. When we come back in September, we'll kick it off for the barbecue. Okay. All right. Let's then go to our Lord in, in prayer and praise and thanksgiving. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we are able to gather together, to join hands together so that we lift up our prayers and our concerns and our praises to you as a unit and as a group of people that bring our our thanks to you. And so, Heavenly Father, we, we ask you to heal those that we put down on the sick list as uh, Tony and Carol and the lady with the cystics uh, breathing problem and uh, Christine Hall you know each of their needs. You know how each one of those bodies and minds and spirits can be healed and made new and fresh again. We commit them to your care and your, your, your healing grace in Jesus' name. And Heavenly Father, we, we give you thanks and praise for some of the answers to prayers that, uh, that we have. Uh, Skyler uh, and his uh, suicide, we thank you that that issue has uh, passed. And Lord, we, we do not know the names of the people who um, were in the accident uh, at I-5. We pray for the
trucker that uh, caused the, the death of those seven people and injuring many others. And Heavenly Father, we, we come to you asking that you will stir in our hearts and our minds so as to be willing workers, volunteers in the areas where we have the abilities to serve the church, to uh, make our church strong and uh, powerful as a witness to our community. And so we ask you to raise up more and more of those who will serve uh, we'll call the serving teams. And Lord, uh, we pray for the gathering in uh, of the Northwest uh, group and uh, Lake Chelan and ask that you watch over them now as they come to the close of uh, their assembly and gathering and they be with them as they travel home, especially with Pastor Fred and Cheryl and the rest of the group that come, has gone there from our church. So these things we commend to your care and keeping, asking for your grace to surround us all. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. amen. <coughs> This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Our opening hymn in Christ's name. <clears throat>
choked up for a minute, so bear with me. The other thing is I would like to say is we gather uh, the prayer of the day. Pay close attention to what we pray. As we're praying for the, the uh, uh, power to intercede for us in the right hand of God that we might live forever in his glory. <coughs> Let us pray. Almighty God, your only Son was taken up to heaven, and in God our mercy is for us. May we also come to you to your presence and live forever in your glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Psalm 47 is found on page 558 
and it's short, so let's just read it all together. Clap your hands, all peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is to be feared, a great king over all the earth. He subdues peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. chosen, he presented himself alive to them after his suffering by many proof appearings to them during the forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while they were staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me, for John baptized you with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they came together, they asked him, Lord, will you be at this time restored to the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria to the ends of the earth. And when he had seen these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by him then in white robes. And they said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go <coughs> to heaven. And then the next reading is the second reading is from Epistles, uh, verse chapter 1, 15 through 23, and it's found on 1159. Okay. For this reason, the reason we got salvation, for this reason, because I have heard your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelations in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your heart enlightened, that you may know what is the hope that God calls you to. Um, sorry, you lost my place. <laughs> okay, that you may know the hope that he has called you to. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance in all the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the works of his great might, so that he worked in Christ when he was raised from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this stage, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is the body and the fullness of him who fits all in all. This is, not okay. this is the reading of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Oh. Holy 
gospel is written in the 24th chapter of St. Luke, uh, beginning with the uh, 50th verse. And he led them out as far as Bethany and lifted up his hands. He blessed them. While he was blessing them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with joy, great joy, and continued in the temple praising God. Here ends the gospel of the Lord. I guess I didn't start on the 15th verse. Oh, he started. But, 44th, but. Okay. Okay, let me go back. I read what, what I consider to be the important part. <laughs> he said, then he said to them, These are my words that I have spoken to you while I am still with you. And everything written about me in the law and the Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead and that the repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. The Gospel of the Lord. Okay. You may be seated. I want to uh, mark the ascension with reading the other uh, accounts of uh, Jesus' ascension. In Matthew, the 28th chapter, the very last part of it, we call it the Great Commission, uh, Jesus uh, has gathered his the disciples uh, and in this account they were in Galilee and it's Matthew 28 verse 16 to the mountain in which God was Jesus had chosen for them and when they saw him they worshipped him but some doubted and Jesus came and said to them all authority in heaven and on earth I have given to you go therefore make disciples and it doesn't actually have uh, in it as a part of the what we call the ascension. It's just the fact that we, they had gathered there and then they were uh, sent out. In uh, Mark's gospel, uh, it's usually not, uh, can, it's, it's the part that was added to the, the last uh, chapter of Mark, so it's often not considered. But, uh, uh, it's uh, Mark 16, beginning verse 19. So then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and they preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them, confirming the message uh, with accompanying signs. The other two accounts we've read, the Luke 1 and the Gospel, or the Book of Acts, these uh, accounts testify to us that Jesus Christ ascended into heaven. The ascension, I'm going to move away from that. I think this mic's still working right. I think so. Yep. Yeah. I can, I can hear myself somewhat. <laughs> I'm going back up. I don't want it to hum and get beaten. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior to you. Ascension. One of the major, I guess I can say doctrines, events, would probably be a better way to say that. Better events of the life of Jesus. And one of the things that is often overlooked 
we don't celebrate Ascension Day as we did when I was first started my ministry some almost six years ago. We had a day set, set aside. It was 40 days after Easter. And that falls for us this year uh, uh, on Thursday last week. And uh, unless, unless you uh, follow strictly uh, uh, liturgics, uh, we wouldn't celebrate today the Ascension. Because today is uh, the sixth or seventh Sunday of Easter, the last Sunday of Easter. And next week is Pentecost. So next Sunday you wear red to church, remember? Red, 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 put in your head, red, 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 just put it in your head. <laughs> Lydia's already ready for uh, next week. Uh, but uh, Ascension or this, this seventh Sunday of Easter has historically been the high priestly prayer of Jesus in the Gospel of John 17. And every year for years, ever, ever since uh, some of you who are longtime Lutherans, ever since we got the red hymnal that came out sometime in, in the 70s. And uh, we have we have had this high priestly prayer of Jesus read on this day. It's a prayer where Jesus prays for himself, which is unusual. But he's praying for his relationship to be back with God as it had been. And then he prays for his disciples who will face persecution. And then he prays for the future believers, that's you and me, that they will be faithful to the end. Uh, and, and so uh, this Sunday has always been an important Sunday in the church year, this last Sunday of Easter. But we're choosing now to use it as Ascension Sunday, because you probably won't find another congregation anywhere that's having an Ascension Sunday service, even though it is one of the major events, as I said, in Jesus' life. He came into this world to share his message of God's love and his relationship to God. And at the last, he ascends back into heaven. He gathers his disciples and each one of the readings that I, I had today shares a little different point of view as to what was the importance of the ascension of Jesus. He ascends to heaven to be at God's right hand to continue to intercede for us. He is lifted up so that he will be Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And we, we had that in, in the Epistle lesson that was read from Ephesians. And all of the lessons we had today, the, the psalm even has the, the emphasis of Jesus' work as the Son of God, even though they're calling the Son of God the work that he does. That's there. <coughs> It's amazing that uh, we have a story of ascension. Can you imagine Jesus, what he had said to his disciples, he had to leave them. Can you imagine if he hadn't left, what well, would be the crisis? Everybody trying to get to him and get healed. Millions of people standing in line waiting for him um, in his earthly position to get heal or find help. The other thing that's important, I think, in, in the passage is the 40 days after Jesus' resurrection, he appears first in the upper room, the door is locked, he appears to, well, not first, he appears to Mary and, and uh, 
some of the women who were at the, at the tomb, and then he appears the locker room, and then he appears to Peter, and then he appears to Andrew. Uh, uh, he appears to uh, uh, Thomas. He appears to two walking on the road. He's down the Sea of Galilee for the fishermen again, calling Peter and John back to the ministry. He's, he appears at different places. <coughs> Finally, the last report, he's, repeated, he's appeared to 500 people. And that one's not recorded except by Paul. Do you imagine that these were stretched out? And so there was a bigger gap between each one of his appearances until finally he doesn't appear anymore. <laughs> what would you think? So the ascension is important to tell us that he did return to the Father. He didn't just disappear. He sits at the right hand of God, interceding. You know, he went to a specific place for a specific purpose. He went to the right hand of God to intercede for all those whom he loves. And that's the world of humankind. And his purpose is to intercede for us. He prays for us. It's always amazing to think for me that Jesus looks at me and, and my failings, my stumblings, my sin, my rebellion, my rejection of him. He prays that I will be faithful. He does that for you as well. He says, Father, I know their human weakness. I know the struggle I had to deal with the temptations of sin, and I did not sin, but they sin. They are the fallen race. They need your grace. They need your abundant love. They cannot carry on in this world without the power that you give to them in love and in grace, in the Holy Spirit. They would be absolutely lost if Jesus Christ did, if, 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 his father, if I didn't uphold them <coughs> before you. Can you visualize that? Can you put that in your mind's eye? That Jesus, I like to think, doesn't just sit, doesn't just stand as the issues that the Bible describes him. I like to think that Jesus bows the knee. He goes down on his knee. And he looks up at his heavenly father. And he says, Father, Strengthen them. Help them walk in the faith and the love that I shared with them. Help them be your people. Help the church. That's Jesus' ministry today. That's what he's there in heaven to do. To pray for you and for me and for the body of Christ that's left here in the world. And when we forget he has ascended, when we forget that this is his ministry and his task now, as a church and as a people, and I mean worldwide, not just, not just here, I think is one of the reasons the church has become weak. We forget the Lord Jesus Christ is perfect <coughs> I would like to remind you that Stephen, the first martyr of the church, just before he was being stoned to death by Saul or Paul, he 
was standing before the Sanhedrin and he looks up into heaven and he says, Behold, I see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of God. I would hope that that can be your vision, just like Stephen's. That you see him asking God, the Father, to help him. Yeah, 
Thank you. 
these gifts. With them, we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and the redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him, you gave himself for us. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, have broken our heart, world without end. Amen. Amen.
Christ given for you. 